I recently visited Fiji for my 30th birthday late last year and during my stay Marriott Momi Bay was one of the resorts that I stayed at. This video is a review of the Marriott Momi Bay property for those that are interested in staying there and would like to know what the facilities are like and what the overall experience is like. Let's begin with the location. Marriott Momi Bay is located 33 kilometers away from Nandi International Airport. It is without a doubt one of the farthest resorts from the International Airport. The drive to the resort consists of some hilly roads with twists and turns, making it roughly a 45 minute journey. It is also not the safest of roads, so if you are driving yourself, then make sure to obey the speed limit at all times. This is satellite imagery of the resort, and right away you can see that the property is absolutely massive. It has a total of 250 rooms with 114 of those being villas and the remaining 136 being rooms all situated on a 21 hectare man-made lagoon which actually used to be a sugarcane farm. Of the 114 villas, 92 are freestanding beachside villas or boors is what they like to call them which is a native Fijian word for a wood and straw hut that is similar to a cabin. So 92 are freestanding villas and then 22 of them are the iconic overwater villas which are very often associated with Fiji and this luxury resort all around the world. Marriott Momi Bay is a five-star resort and it was built in 2016 by Fletcher Pacific Construction which is a construction company from New Zealand. The resort was designed by the Bukan Group which is an Australian architectural firm. I know that's a lot of very boring facts, so let's end that there. This is the official resort map, which consists of 27 spots and locations around the property, though we will only be focusing on a handful of the noteworthy ones. Number one, we have the main gate of the property, which is on Savu Savu Road at the southeast corner of the property. Right next to the gate on the right hand side at number three, we have a conference center with the largest conference room being 1,399 square feet and a total event space of 4,513 square feet. Number five is the Port Cochere, which is basically the main entrance of the hotel, which leads you to the hotel lobby. Number eight is the Lagoon Lounge, which is an interesting one. From what I could tell during my stay at Momi, it's not quite a full-blown restaurant, but more of a bar and lounge setting as the name suggests, so don't go there looking for a big meal. On the right at number 26, we have the biggest restaurant space on the property, which is Goji Kitchen and Bar. This restaurant serves a daily buffet for dinner as well as a breakfast buffet. It is the only restaurant that's open for breakfast on the property if I'm not mistaken. Number 9 is the Fish Bar which is hands down the most exclusive restaurant on the property. Fish Bar is a fine dining restaurant and it has the prices to match. It is definitely worth it though and the food was so good that I had dinner there multiple times during my stay. Number 10 we have the Sunset Pool which is an adult only pool and actually the only pool that was available to me during my stay at Momi because the main lagoon pool was closed due to some major repairs being done. This pool is really nice and frankly I prefer it to the lagoon pool because it has a panoramic infinity pool view of the Pacific Ocean for all those breathtaking sunsets. Now jumping a few places we have Kawaii Water Sports at number 17 on the northeast end of the property which is actually a privately run water sports service that uses the Momi Bay premises. They've got jet skiing, stand up paddle boarding, snorkeling, parasailing and you can even book out their flight board. They also do fishing charters with a wide range of boats able to accommodate a wide range of numbers and people. Jet skiing is one of the activities I did when I stayed at Momi and it was actually really nice. The guide takes you all the way out to the ocean and takes you around some noteworthy sites too. Number 18 is the Quan Spa which operates in its own detached building. If you want a relaxing spa day during your stay at Momi then make sure to book with the hotel staff. Right next to that at number 21 we have the gym and fitness center which also doubles as a kids club for the younger companions while you travel. Number 22 is the kids pool which is actually pretty big and able to accommodate a large number of kids. Right next to it at number 23 we have the main lagoon pool which is the largest infinity pool on the property that also has a pool bar that is operated by the Lagoon House restaurant. This is of course the pool that was undergoing some major repairs during my stay at Momi and was closed for about a week. Number 24 is the Lagoon House restaurant which is one of the restaurants on the property that's open for lunch and dinner. It's a mid-tier restaurant with some really nice options on the menu. 
During my stay, I had both lunch and dinner at the Lagoon House and the food was really good each time. Number 27 is Voi Voi Bar, which is like a small bar and kitchen that serves mostly lunch. There are specific occasions where they do do dinners there too, but I believe that is not a regular thing. Voi Voi has some really delicious and quirky meal options and is a good pit stop during the day to catch a quick bite. During my stay, I had lunch at Voi Voi multiple times and the food was very delicious every single time. And finally, at number 20, we have the tennis and basketball courts on the far northeast corner of the property. In terms of the rooms, the 92 freestanding villas make up the front wall of the lagoon wrapping the entire ocean front of the property. A lot of them have really nice beach access, but after closer first-hand inspection, if it's beach that you want, then you probably want the ones that are on the inside of the lagoon as opposed to the ocean-facing ones. The ocean does tend to get quite choppy at dusk, and in my opinion, the only reason you want the ocean-facing villas is for complete privacy. Bang in the center, we have the iconic overwater villas in all their glory. Due to the nature of these rooms being over water, there is only one access to these villas and it's a good thing that the walkway is wide enough to accommodate golf carts because it's quite a long walk. When I was at Momi, I actually stayed in this overwater villa right here and words cannot even describe how beautiful this room was and how breathtaking the views were. I was however a little put off with the privacy or lack thereof and this is where I feel like the designers of this property could have done better. After having stayed in one of these villas, I can tell you firsthand that no matter where you look, you will always be facing somebody or someone will always be facing you. The overwater villas are the most expensive rooms on the property, but they are also the least private rooms, which makes absolutely no sense to me at all. For those of you interested in finding out more about the overwater rooms, I'll be uploading a full detailed review and rundown on the overwater villa that I stayed in so that you know exactly what this room has to offer. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. Anyway, I reckon the best rooms to get are the freestanding villas because you have such a wide selection to choose from. Whether you want pure unobstructed ocean access and views or you want pristine beach access at the expense of a little privacy, that's the go-to room in my opinion. Then finally, this massive block of double-story buildings on the southeast houses the rest of the 136 rooms on the property. The ones on the bottom southeast corner are the Lagoon View rooms. As you can see, they are right on the water and are actually built over the water. I also stayed in one of these rooms during my stay and I can confidently say that they are definitely the best value rooms on the property. You get a nice balcony with a lagoon view with plenty of fish and marine life, but you also surprisingly get privacy. Each balcony is bordered by a protruding wall, which means that none of your neighbors can see you, which is really nice and the reason why I spend countless hours in my underwear on the balcony. The rooms on the northern end are standard rooms with lawn access balconies. These, I believe, are the cheapest rooms on the property, but are also the least desirable ones. Overall, Merritt Momi Bay is a wonderful five-star resort that is well-equipped and beautifully secluded from the hustle and bustle of central Nandi. What's particularly eye-catching is the sheer scale of the property. I had trouble walking around the premises simply because it is just so big and it's a small wonder that the resort heavily relies on golf cart transport around the premises. The resort is also relatively brand new in the world of hotels, having only been built in 2016 and all the facilities show. The property is in pristine condition. There was talk from senior staff about future expansions from Marriott in the future that are in the works, including a casino at some point, though I could not verify this information. There are a few things I wish they could have done better though. One of those things is transport in and out of Nandi. As mentioned before, the property is about 45 minutes away from Nandi, which is a long drive. A cool suggestion would be a regular ferry or boat service between Momi Bay and Port Dinaral, for example. This could perhaps cut a 45 minute drive to a 25 to 30 minute ferry ride. Goji is the largest restaurant on the property and is the restaurant that serves buffet breakfast and buffet dinners as mentioned before. It would have been nice to see a lot more exotic options on their dinner menu. Breakfast was generally fine, but it would have been nice to see a lot more seafood options with the dinner buffets. Another thing is that the third party activities and services are independent and somewhat disjointed from the hotel operations. 
meaning that there is generally limited information on bookings and availability from the hotel side. It would really go a long way if they could create a system where all hotel services and third party services are linked on a single website or database that is easily accessible to guests, whether they're halfway across the world or five minutes away in their room at Momi. In addition to that, with the resort premises being so massive, it would have been nice to see them have a more streamlined system for golf carts. There are certain times that I did have to wait 30 minutes to 45 minutes for a golf cart to show up and sometimes they didn't even send one. Finally, an additional restaurant or entertainment bar or lounge with daily night events for the more grown up guests besides just the lagoon lounge would be nice, but that's just me nitpicking. Thanks for watching if you made it this far in the video. If you enjoyed the video, then make sure you're subscribed if you haven't already done so for more future uploads like this. And don't forget to drop a comment in the comment section. It really goes a long way. I'll catch you folks in the next one. Mm -hmm.